Okay, here are the ingredients that you will need to make the Salisbury steak. Now, I am making three Salisbury steak meals, so for the group. And so I have everything here tripled, but I'm going to tell you how to make it for one, one portion, okay? So if you make it at home. So you will need one pound lean ground beef, a third cup dry breadcrumbs, one fourth cup chopped onions, one garlic clove minced, but you could do more, it really makes it yummy. One egg beaten, one half teaspoon Worcestershire sauce, and a teaspoon of salt, and a fourth teaspoon of pepper. So what we're gonna do is combine it all into our beef and mix it and get it all blended together. And then I'll show you how to make the patties. Uh, one pound of meat, the recipe says it makes four patties, but that's thick patties, and I don't like them thick. They are really better thin. So we're just going to take a ball um, in your hand, pat it down into a ball, okay, and it's like what Rachel Ray says when she makes her burgers, go thin in the middle and thicker on the ends because it will puff up. So I tried to do that concept. And it usually with a pound of meat, I'll end up getting eight patties out of, out of the meat. So. And then I'll stick it on here. So I was able to get 17 patties out of three pounds of beef. I probably could have gone more uh, done more patties because the burger does plump up but um, I didn't want to make it too thin and then it falls apart I don't know how it'll be in the freezer process like after when it's cooked so okay so I have oil in my pan um, you can use any oil that you like I just have corn uh, corn or canola oil in there um, so what you're gonna do is heat up your pan and then cook the patties in the skillet uh, for about 10 minutes on both sides to the both sides of brown. I also have this other skillet here that I'm going to utilize and start putting the other meat in as well. So I'll just start placing those in a hot skillet so we're not wasting time with one frying pan. Okay, I have my two skillets done. They're all brown. Um, so now we're going to add the, we're going to start making the gravy. You will need two cups beef stock, one large onion sliced thinly, one liter of minced garlic, uh, pretty much start mincing a ton of garlic, uh, one cup of sliced mushrooms, three tablespoons cornstarch and three tablespoons cold water. The recipe calls for a cup of mushrooms, but afterwards I just went back and started loading the mushroom in. It's so good. And then with your onions, if you're not a fan, um, you can always pick them out after this process. They really bring a flavor to the gravy. And for the chopped onions in the patties, you can always grind, like grade the onion into the patty so you get the juice. That always seems to be yummy if you don't want to crunch on it. And then with the garlic, you can honestly put as much as you want in. Um, the recipe calls for a lot, and my kids have never noticed you know they never complain about it um, I think they're probably used to garlic by now and then what you'll do is that you'll bring the, the the gravy to a boil and you'll simmer everything the patties and the mushrooms and everything for 10 minutes and when it and that finishes the cooking process on the patties and then when you're done um, you take them out the patties out and then you thicken the gravy mixture with uh, the cornstarch and water so in a bowl, you will add three tablespoons of very cold water, 
and three tablespoons of cornstarch. And you'll mix that all together until it gets liquidy and not lumpy. And you don't want to add cornstarch directly into your gravy in the pan because then it'll, it'll lump up on you. I've had this happen before with other recipes, so I've gone through that horrible experience. So you want to put it in cold water first, mix it really good, and it'll get nice and smooth and runny for you. And then you can add it to the gravy. So now you'll add your cornstarch mixture into your gravy and stir it really well. And you'll notice that the color will change into this really light brown color. It gets really pretty. And you'll heat that up uh, until it bubbles a little bit and, and where it starts to thicken. I didn't let mine get too thick just because when they put these freezer meals into the oven, it'll thicken up some more. So I didn't want it too thick for them. But just mix it all together and get it to the thickness that you would like. So I got the gravy mixture into the pans where the patties were and just kind of smooth it around, make it as even as you can. So at this point they're ready to eat. You know, mash yourself up some potatoes and ooh, put the gravy on it and you're set to go for dinner. Um, so it is ready to eat at this point. So now I'm just going to let it cool off, put the freezer covers on and pop them in my freezer 